here we go. We are Philips Fan Band. We're going to be doing kind of like a little experiment and we're going to make a homemade metal foundry. And so what it's used for, actually there's multi, it's multi-purpose. So you can use it as a plant holder. You can use it for melting aluminum. You can also use it to, as like a little mini grill where you can uh, cook hot dogs. You can do what you want with it. So we're going to get started on this and show you step by step how to make one. All right, to start things off, we're going to take some plaster of Paris and we're going to pour it into a bucket. Then we're going to take some play sand and mix it in. It's a one to one ratio between the plaster of Paris and the play sand. So you're going to pour them in together into the same bucket. Then you're going to take some water and then you're going to mix the two together. Here we're using a mixer, but you can also use your hand. The main thing is to make sure that any of the plaster of Paris or sand, any dry clumps are removed. You want it to be somewhat runny so that way you can pour it in to your steel bucket. Here we go, we're pouring it into the steel bucket. You can see that there's some chunks, but we've already gone through to make sure that there's nothing that's dry in there. So it's got to have a runny consistency, but not too wet. Now we're going to work on making the center of the foundry. Here I'm using just a two and a half quart uh, bucket to put water in. And I'm going to press it down into the center and I'm going to hold it for about, I would say about five minutes. And you're going to start to feel that it's going to get harder around it. Then once you do that, you're going to let it sit. You, you can use water to weigh it down. You can use rocks, but you're going to let it sit and then you're going to let it cure for about an hour. All right, so now that we're waiting for that to dry, we're going to go ahead and get started on the lid. The lid is used to help retain the heat. We're going to use the same ingredients. We're going to use the plaster of Paris and the play sand at the same one to one ratio. And then we're going to mix in some water. I'm going to leave the specific amounts of material used as well as the bucket sizes in the description for the foundry base and the lid. So take a look at that and you could screenshot it or print it out so you can use it during the project. Here I am mixing the sand. I've decided to mix the lid by hand. I found that doing it by the mixer completely got it real runny and it took longer to set up. So I started doing it by hand and then towards the end I used the mixer to help get, a, get rid of all of the final powdered clumps. So now that we're done mixing, we're going to let the lid set up to dry and we're going to place two four inch U-bolts in the top. This will help us lift the, t the lid later. Also note that when setting the U-bolts, you're going to want to make sure you have enough space for a three inch diameter hole to be drilled in the middle. This is so whatever metals you put in will be able to fit. I set my U-bolt handles a little close. You can always set them a little further apart. Now back to the foundry. We're going to look at the center. Now that it's cured and dried, you're going to take some channel locks or pliers and pull towards the center. Once you get to the center, you're going to twist. You're going to continue to twist until it pops out. It's very easy and comes out smoothly. And then all you're going to do is clean out the center of your foundry and get it ready for the placement of your crucible. Now that the foundry is cleaned out and cured, we're going to go ahead and go back to the lid and we're going to drill a three inch diameter hole in the center. This also helps for cans to be dropped in to melt aluminum. We're going to drill the hole and this will allow for ventilation so we don't trap all of the heat. And now we have the center hole complete. So now we're going to go to the side of the steel bucket and we're going to drill in with about an inch and three eighths hole saw to allow for the blower tube to slide in. We're first going to try to go through the metal. Now that we're through the steel, we can start angling the hole saw about 30 degrees down through the plaster. Remember, this is to be about an inch and a half down from the top of the plaster. This will also allow the blower tube to sit comfortably in the foundry. Now the blower tube. We're going to use one inch, 12 inch long black gas pipe, two foot PVC, one inch pipe with a threaded coupling and a slip coupling to be attached together. 
like this. It's pretty easy. You don't need any joint, any glue, any pipe compound, anything of that sort. Everything fits real nice and snug. You actually can also, we found, you could also make a lightsaber, which we'll show you that in another video as well. Then you're gonna sit it in at an angle, just like this, and get ready to light the foundry. Now we're gonna start setting some charcoal into the center of the foundry. We're gonna set about five pieces of charcoal down at the bottom and get ready to set the crucible in the center. We're using a steel crucible about three to four inches in diameter. Then we're gonna take a blow dryer and attach it with duct tape to the end of the blower tube. We'll take the blower tube and set it at an angle inside of the foundry. Yeah. Dude, that's pretty sweet. Now we're gonna get ready to light it up. I'm putting a little lighter fluid around the charcoal to help boost it because we're just using a match lighter. I recommend using a map gas torch that will light it up much quicker and hotter. Yeah. So there you have it. There's our backyard mini foundry that you can use to melt scrap metal. All right, so just wanna wrap it all up and just say thank you to my friend Brian who helped me get this all together. We actually made two of them this day. So stay tuned for an upcoming video where we are gonna use the foundry to melt aluminum cans.